here's a comment. Uh, this person says, like you, my mother died from diabetes disguised as cancer and heart disease. I thought that was an interesting way of putting it, and I think there's a lot of truth behind it. Diabetes disguised as cancer. Diabetes dis disguised as heart disease. Diabetes disguised as a stroke. There are so many effects from high blood sugar, negative effects, consequences, the terrible things that happen. And a lot of times they'll never put it on your death certificate or they'll never even talk to you about it when you're in the hospital, if you're still alive. And they'll just say, well, you've got bad heart disease. Your heart is failing or your kidneys are failing. Uh, you've had a stroke. Let us get you into some rehabilitation and see if we can get you back where you were. And they never even stop to think so much of this. I can't say that every single stroke, every single heart attack is a result, but so much of this, probably the majority of these kind of things are the result of high glucose and high insulin, metabolic syndrome, insulin resistant, resistance, call it what you like. It's that. And it's like the hydra-headed monster. It's like got tentacles going every which direction and all kinds of medical problems. And a lot of people don't realize it. And so a lot of times you have a heart attack and the doctor and you are both tunnel focused on trying to see if you can live through it and fix your heart and go on, not even thinking that insulin resistance may be behind it. So anyway, my, doc, my mother died from diabetes disguised as cancer and heart disease. It was hard to watch. Now I too am a diabetic, this individual says. The difference is knowledge. Yeah, thank God. There is knowledge available now. It's not everywhere and not everybody knows it, but it's coming out. It's hard to hide something that works as well as this does. This low carbohydrate, time-restricted eating approach to high glucose and high insulin. Uh, the difference is knowledge. He says, I remember my mother eating carbohydrates constantly because whole grains were supposed to be good for you in the 80s and 90s. Same with my mom. They were supposed to be good. Be sure and eat your whole grains. Eat your whole grain bread. Eat your brown rice. Eat your sweet potatoes. Don't you touch that white potato. No, 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 that's not good. But a sweet potato, perfect. Well, see if Mike the meter, your glucose meter agrees that a sweet potato is perfect because mine doesn't agree at all. Yeah, a white potato will jack up my blood sugar a bit more than a sweet potato, but not much. Not much. So, um, my mother was eating carbohydrates, he says, because whole grains were supposed to be good for you back in the 80s and 90s. Now, he says, we know the real effects of carbohydrates on blood sugar, something that a $20 glucometer can tell you. But we do know it now, and the word has gotten out, and there's no pulling that genie back into the box or uh, back into the genie container. The knowledge is out there, and it'll stay out there. As long as people have the freedom to speak their mind, uh, it's going to be available. I feel very fortunate, he says, to have experienced my poor mother's health, which is kind of a sad thing to say, but for him, it turned out to be a blessing because it gave him a warning. That's what gives me the willpower to maintain this low-carb diet. Willpower has never been my strong point, but I can do this. I like that. He's like, well, I've never been too big in, on willpower, but I can do this. Well, yeah, you can. And, you know, thinking about willpower, most people don't have the willpower to go out for a jog uh, regularly. Anybody can do it for one or two days a year, but regularly, not many have. Not many are going to go out running are sprinting in their neighborhood or at the school track. They just don't have the willpower to do that regularly or ever. But guess what? If some bad guy, some bully, came at you with a baseball bat and he's bigger than you and tougher than you and he has a baseball bat in his hand and he intends to split your skull with it, do you think you might find the willpower to run from him? <laughs> I would. I, I wouldn't have a problem. I wouldn't sit around and say, well, let's see. He's coming at me with a baseball bat, and I just wonder if I have enough willpower to run from him. Hmm, let me think about it. Hold it up, Mr. Bully. Just, just hold that bat in your hand for a minute. I've got to decide whether I have enough willpower to run away from you. No, you don't have to debate. You don't have to decide. You immediately kick it into high gear, and you run as fast as you can. Well, diabetes is a bully. And it's coming at you with worse than a baseball bat. It's coming at you with the ability to destroy your life, shorten your life, ruin your health, 
make you miserable. And you don't have to sit around and decide whether you have enough willpower. If you just know enough about diabetes and enough about the solution, there's really two things you've got to know to have that willpower. One is how bad diabetes really is. Some people, they don't get it. It's like, well, yeah, I've heard diabetes is not a good thing, but they don't realize just how devastating it can be. If you've had a mom like I have that suffered like she did, and of course now I, I hear from diabetics constantly, every day, every day, all the time, and uh, I hear all kinds of horror stories about it. But if you get some information, you really get just how insidious diabetes is. Now, that's step one. And the only other thing you need is the knowledge of how you can avoid it and beat it back and send it packing. And as I mentioned over and over, it means you cut the carbs. It means you cut the starches and the sugars. Everybody knows you cut the sugar, but you've also got to cut the, the starches the whole grain breads and the white breads, the sweet potatoes and the white potatoes, the brown rice and the white rice, the brown pasta and the white pasta, and, you, and all of the breakfast cereals, unless it's a keto cereal. So you, number one, you have to know how bad diabetes is. That's not hard to find out if you just open your eyes and look around. Number two, what do I do about it? If you don't know what to do about it, then you're just confused and scared. But clueless and you can't really take action because you don't know which action to take. But once you get how bad it is, and number two, what you can do about it, which is drastically reduce your carbohydrates. I didn't say eliminate them down to zero. That means you eat no vegetables at all. And I don't really believe that that's necessary or even good. But you, you get them way down. You eat the low carb veggies, not the potatoes and the corn and so forth. And then you've got all the willpower you need. You know, you, you know what to do. You know how bad your foe is, your enemy. And you don't have to scratch your head and think, do I have enough willpower? Don't I? The willpower will automatically come. Boom. Like magic, you'll have willpower. So, and, and that's what channels like mine are doing, along with many others. We're just saying, here's what diabetes is. Here's, here's how bad it is. Here's what you can do about it. And by the way, take your meter into the battle and check yourself and you'll find out you're beating that monster. You're actually defeating your enemy. The bully is getting beat. And after a while, he'll run away crying and miserable and sad that he ever attacked you in the first place. You can do it, my friend. So go for it. I want to encourage you to join Benedict and me in our home through our new podcast, Discover the Word with Den and Ben. While you drive in your car or while you walk or exercise at the gym, you can be learning the Bible through our low-key, user-friendly Bible studies. To get the information you need to listen to our Discover the Word with Den and Ben podcast, click on the link in the description.